Caroline's debut, give it up for Mark Stetson. <laughs> Before you die. <laughs> wow, I think my bank teller is here. I, uh, I've been sick recently, and um, I used to have a girlfriend who every time I got sick, the first thing that popped out of her mouth was, oh, You better not get me sick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, baby. I thought that since, you know, I got a stomach virus and I've been shitting for the past 36 hours straight. You know, it's been so good for me. I figure, I, I don't want to be a jerk and hog all the fun. I don't want to be a fun hog. So, so what I did today was I slept on your side of the bed so that my sick viral sweat could suck into your pillow, which I also drooled profusely on. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna be in the bathroom being Montezuma's bitch for the next 36 hours. Another one I love is the, uh, now is the worst time for me to get sick. Really? When's it ever a good time? <laughs> you ever write on your internet blog like, you know, now would be a perfect time for me to get a good 24 hour flu. <laughs> I'm between jobs right now. I'd really go for a good dose of SARS. <laughs> I was on the subway on the way up here and I saw that Jerry Orbach ad on the subway. Uh, the, uh, Jerry Orbach, the guy from uh, Law and Order and uh, the father from Dirty Dancing. <laughs> this is a picture of him like, and a caption that says, Jerry Orbach gave his heart and soul to acting. And the gift of, and the gift of sight to two New Yorkers. Wow, as if giving your heart and soul wasn't enough. Take your eyes too, it's fucked. So let me get this straight, there are two New Yorkers walking around, each with one Orbach eye. So what would happen if both eyes we're trying to find each other, like in some bad Jessica Alba film. In a world where nothing is what it looks like, two eyes will stop at nothing to find one thing, each other. Jessica Alba, Dane Cook, and Crispin Glover in Jerry Orbach's eyes. Or the romantic comedy, it's like, Greg never, never, Greg never believed in love at first sight, neither did Tina, until they both found each other and notice they're both looking into Jerry Orbach's eyes. <laughs> Starring Jessica Alba and Dane Cook. So, the election is a pretty hot topic right now. And um, I'm only gonna say one thing about it. And I think the most intelligent, poetic way from Hillary gives me the willies. <laughs> she does. She reminds me of Annette Benning from American Beauty. Like, I used to see her waking up at 4.30 in the morning taking an ice-cold, hour-long shower just you know, to get her blood temperature to about a good, tepid 13 degrees. She comes out, puts on her crisp business suit, and she goes, I will win this country today. She frightens me. Like, I used to see her, like, slaughtering her neighbor's Pomeranian with her bare teeth. Like, FDR said that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. FDR never met Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Although one thing that I think that is being, um, th that isn't being dealt with really enough in these debates are, uh, is terrorism. And not the terrorism we usually talk about, which is like Iraq and Osama bin Laden, because Osama, Osama bin Laden is important to find. But there is one criminal that's more dangerous than Osama bin Laden will ever be. Carmen Sandiego. <laughs> The most notorious thief in history is still at large. And our politicians have the gall to look us in the eye and say, Iraq is our number one priority. When, when Van Gogh's Starry Night can be stolen at any moment. With a picture of Bambi on top of it. <laughs> Lincoln Monument can be gone by six o'clock tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And there's nothing we can do about it. We have to do something. We found Saddam in a hole in the ground. We can't find a five foot ten woman with a big red hat and a matching trench coat? Bullshit! Bullshit! I say we band together, folks. We gotta get together and put this bitch behind bars. Who's with me? Who's with me? Let's go!
There's no door back here. But who, who remembers where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Yeah. It doesn't get better than where in the world is Carmen San Diego. It, it, the warrant? Rockapella? That's embarrassing. Uh, back to Winterworld is Carmen San Diego. See, you got these kids who are doing these kick ass geography games just to put this, this thief behind bars. But I really started to feel for them when these kids, some of them, would go home and not capture. Carmen San Diego. They wouldn't find her. And I really felt for their parents, because they had to like honestly try to understand. They'd be like, honey, it's okay. We'll find Carmen. They'll find Carmen in the next episode. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, mom? Do the Hardy Boys ever say, you know, it's okay? We'll, we'll solve the mystery of the hidden cave tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, we couldn't solve the case before mom called us in for dinner, so we'll let Nancy, we'll let Nancy Drew take care of it. You think Encyclopedia Brown ever had to stop sleuthing because it was his bedtime? No. You know why? Because they're professionals. You know who gives up? Amateurs. I'm no amateur, Mom! Carmen San Diego is still out there, mocking me. She sneaks around the world from Kiev to Carolina. She's a sticky-fingered filter from Berlin down to Berlin. She'll take you on a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? See, folks, after this is all said and done, you're gonna go home, you're gonna crawl into bed, you're gonna watch that episode of Lost you DVR from last week, and you're gonna think you're safe. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you are not safe. As long as Carmen San Diego is out there, you are not safe. As long as Carmen San Diego is out there, I've got a job to do. I've got a thief to catch. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. <laughs> Jetson in the house. Very impressive.